Hey guys, we're going to continue on lesson 7-2 and we're going to focus in on zero and negative exponents. And before we dig into that, we are going to copy something that's in your math book uh, so that everybody understands what their answers should look like. So this comes from page 401 in your book. I want you to hear all the things that it tells us. So it starts with an expression is considered simplified, so in lowest terms, when it contains And then here comes the details. Only positive exponents there are no powers of powers Each base appears only once. And all fractions are in simplest form. So the reason why I put this in here because some people think I need to tell them what I expect every answer to look like. There's my expectation. The directions will ask you to simplify or you know, give me some sort of answer like that. Um, but what it means is only positive exponents, there are no powers of powers, each base appears only once, and all fractions are in simplest form. Now there's times when they will tell you to leave the answer as a negative exponent, and that's okay. So let's dive into what do I mean by a negative exponent? First, we're going to deal with zeros. Those are the easier ones. So let's say I have 3 to the 5th, and I want to divide it by 3 to the 5th. So if I expanded it, that would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 over 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. OK. So then I'm going to look for some partners. 3 divided by 3 equals 1. 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 So when I multiply that all out, I get 1. Now if you think about it, 3 fifths divided by itself will equal 1. Now let's apply the quotient of powers rule, or the power of quotients. Quotient of powers. I know that's weird. And we would take the numerator exponent and subtract from it the denominator exponent. And we get 3 to the 0 power. So the conclusion we're going to draw is that 3 to the 0 power will equal 1. So when you end up getting an exponent of a 0, that means you're dividing a number by itself. So this is the zero exponent property. Zero exponent property. And it states any non-zero number raised to the zero oh, number raised to the zero power equals one. Okay, so the reason why I have to say non zero number, because if you divide a number by zero, then you're gonna get something that you can't do. 
So algebraically, it looks like this. a to the 0 power equals 1, where a is any non-zero number. Okay? And it doesn't matter if your base is a fraction or a decimal um, if you're raising that to a power, you're raising each the numerator and the denominator to that power. So 2 seventh to the 0 power is going to give me 2 to the 0 power over 7 to the 0 power, which is 1 over 1, which equals 1. Okay? So that's that guy. I'm going to go to the next screen so I can talk all together about a 0 or a negative exponent. And that would be like c squared divided by c to the fifth. So we're going to get c times c in the numerator, but c times c times c times c times c in the denominator. And then I'm going to look for any pairs. c divided by c is 1. c divided by c is 1. So what do we have left over? Well, we have 1 times 1 in the numerator, and there's 3 c's left over. And you're going to say, okay, that's fabulous. Where's the negative exponent coming from? Well, remember, we talked about that. Um, if we have, take the power quotient of powers, and we take numerator to take away the denominator, that's going to give me c to the negative third. So our conclusion would be that 1 over c cubed equals c to the negative third. And that is really reversed relationship as well, where c to the negative third power is equal to 1 over c cubed. So this is called the negative exponent property. We did see uh, a number to the zero power in our 7.1 notes. And it says for any, again, non-zero number, and we'll call that number A, and any integer n, <coughs> sorry, a to the negative n power is the reciprocal I'm going to go erase that because I did that in black. I'm going to change the erase and turn that black back into green. Sorry about that. <coughs> so a to the negative nth power is the reciprocal of a to the nth power. Oop, I did that backwards. Let's try that again. And then the reverse is going to be true as well. <coughs> also, the reciprocal of a to the negative nth, or no, a, yeah, to the negative nth is. Oops, this should be green again. A to the nth power. 
Now you might say, um, aren't those the, didn't I just write the same thing? The answer is actually technically no. So let me write the first one. <coughs> it says A, and I'm just going to use solid colors here. A to the negative nth is the reciprocal of A to the nth. So the reciprocal of A to the nth would be 1 over A to the nth. Then the second statement said the reciprocal of A to the negative nth. So that would be 1 over A to the negative nth is equal to A to the n. Okay, so that's what that's meaning. So let me show you a couple of examples. <coughs> Just some brief ones. So let's say we have 2 to the negative fourth. So that follows the first example above, which means I can rewrite this as 1 over 2 to the fourth. So when I take that negative exponent and I put it in the other position of a fraction, so right now a to the negative nth is in the numerator, I can put a 1 underneath it. So if I take the reciprocal, it also has an effect on the sign. So it changes the sign to the opposite sign. And then I can do the math where I'm going to get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. So I get 1 to the 16th. Okay. Now let's take the other guy. And let's say we have uh, 1 over j to the negative 4th. Well, I'm going to take the reciprocal of that. That's going to move it into the numerator, and it's going to change the exponent. Okay. So let's go practice this. I'm going to go to my new screen, and we'll see this in action. So the directions are going to say simplify each expression. Assume that no denominator equals 0. So again, they always have to say that so you understand you can't divide by 0. Because that's a mathematical impossibility. All right, so here we go. Number 1, we have x to the 5th, y to the 0, divided by x cubed. OK, so first thing I notice is that y to the 0 is the same as 1. So we'd multiply by 1. And then we would follow the rules we have about um, quotients. And I would subtract the exponents, numerator, take away denominator. And that's going to, the that multiplied by 1 is still going to be that. And then we just get x squared. And that's how I get that answer. All right, let's try another one. Ooh, this is mean. So we have a fraction, 2f to the 4th, g to the 7th, h cubed. Oh, yeah, I remember this. It's kind of a trick question. 15f cubed g to the ninth, h to the sixth, and we're going to take it to the zero power. So <clears throat> normally we would simplify this fraction as much, much as possible. So I only saw g show up once, f show up once, h show up once. However, where you need to pay attention to is that exponent of zero, and all you need to say is equals one. And that's your answer. Anything to the zero power, doesn't matter what's inside. If you're raising it to the zero power, you're going to need to get one. <clears throat> All right, let's try another one. Uh, we've got, ooh, this is a good one. 2a squared b cubed c to the negative fifth divided by, because that's what a fraction bar really means, 10a cubed a to the negative third, excuse me, b to the negative, oh, a lot of negatives, negative first, c to the negative fourth. Okay, so what we're going to do is take our coefficients 
and we will divide them. We're going to take our exponents, numerator, take away, denominator, on the B, numerator, take away, denominator, on the C, numerator, take away, the denominator. So I'm using those parentheses to separate the subtraction sign from the negative sign. Now, what we get to do is remember our rules. So we're going to get uh, 2 and 10 have a 1 in common, or 2 in common, so that gives us 1 fifth. Now on this guy, 2 negatives make 2 positives, so we're going to get 2 plus 3 is 5. On the C's, or the B's, excuse me, we have the same thing happen, where we have a double negative, so we're going to add the opposite. So it ends up being 3 plus 1, or 4. Now this one gets a little trickier here, so I'm going to do it underneath. This still is going to be add the opposite, or sorry, add the opposite, but I have a negative 5 plus a 4. So that's going to give me a negative 1. Okay, so again, remember the generic rule at the top is we cannot have any negative exponents. So that says that that guy, C, has to go down into the denominator, being a reciprocal, and then he becomes positive. So we're going to have a numerator. We have an a to the fifth b to the fourth. Notice I'm not going to have the one there because one times anything is that other thing. That's the identity property of multiplication. But in the denominator will be a 5 and a c. Okay? And that would be it. That would be the final answer. Okay, that was enjoyable. Ha ha ha. Alright, let's try another one like that. <clears throat> and we have 32 a to the negative eighth, b cubed, c to the negative fourth, divided by four, a cubed, b to the fifth, and c to the negative second. So I'm going to show you a different way to solve this problem. So I'm going to pull out the coefficients because they kind of follow just generic rules. But what I'm going to do from here on out with the variables is if they're positive, they stay where they're at, okay? So I see a couple of positives. In the numerator, b cubed. Denominator, a cubed, b to the fifth, okay? So those guys are happy where they're at. But then I have an a to the negative eighth from the numerator, which means a to the negative eighth would go in the denominator. Okay, I have c to the negative fourth in the numerator, so, oh, sorry, let's try this again. The he becomes positive. Remember, it's reciprocal changes the sign. I'm talking to myself, right? <clears throat> c to the negative fourth, if he go take the reciprocal, it becomes one over c to the fourth. Well, what about that c to the negative second? Well, he is going to go on top, and he's going to become c squared. Okay, now, I'm not saying try it this way. I'm just showing you a different way of looking at this, kind of using the idea of reciprocals. Now, I know what 32 divided by 4 is. It's 8. So let me take stock in what I have. So in the numerator, I have b cubed c squared. In the denominator... I have three a's and eight more, so for a total of 11. So I have a to the 11. And then I have b to the fifth and c to the fourth. <clears throat> so the problem is, notice, I've got b's on top, b's on the bottom, c's on the top, c's on the bottom, but I have a's on the bottom. So I know for sure that a to the 11th has to stay on the bottom. So what happens to the other guys? Well, let's use some logic. We could do it this way and say b cubed minus 5. Or we could say, hmm, there's more b's on the bottom. And 5 is greater than 3. 
So wherever the 5 is, or where the leftover is. So if I subtract them, I get 2. So either way, the Bs are going to end up at the bottom because there's more Bs there. All right? And if I had done it with the negative exponents, I would have had B to the negative second, which would have said its reciprocal would give me B squared in the denominator. Okay, let's look at the Cs. So again, 2 take away 4, that's going to give me a negative C to the negative second power, which is saying that the Cs, I want to take the reciprocal. Think about it, there's more C's on the bottom. 4 is greater than 2. In fact, it's greater, oops, I don't know where the 5 came from. 4 is greater than 2 than by 2. So what that's saying, since I have more C's in the bottom, oops, that's where the C's would end up. So I'm going to have a total of 2 C's left over. So my answer is 8 over 8. A to the 11th, B squared, C squared. So strangely enough, everything ended up in the denominator. Okay? Now, can you do number 4 the way we did number 3? And the answer is absolutely. Okay? But negative exponents can't stay on top. <clears throat> and then last one. We have 5J to the negative 3rd power. See, we don't say negative cubed. That seems weird. Uh, maybe you do. I don't know. K squared, m to the negative 6th power, and we have 25, and we have k to the negative 4th, and m to the negative 2nd. So I'm actually going to solve this problem like I did number 3. So I'm going to go ahead and take my coefficients, and then I'll simplify those. Now, I'm going to keep everything on one level. That's what happens when we do it the subtraction way. Now, the interesting thing is there aren't any j's on the bottom, so I can subtract 0 from that. On my k's, we're going to have 2, and then we're going to take away negative 4. And then we have our m's. <coughs> And we're going to have a negative 6 take away a negative 2. Okay. So fraction-wise, we get 1 over 5. And then we have j to the negative 3rd. And then over here, we're going to have add the opposite. So that's going to be 2 plus 4, which is going to give me k to the 6. And then on the m's, I'm going to be adding the opposite. So now I have negative 6 plus 2, so signs are different. Bigger number is negative, and 6 take away 2 is 4. All right, so anything that has a negative exponent has to go into the denominator. And we know the coefficient 5 is in the denominator. The j is going to have to go in the denominator and the m will have to go in the denominator. And once they go in the denominator, now their exponents are positive. And then the k to the 6 is going to stay on top, and that's it. And I don't have to do 1 times k to the 6, because 1 times k to the 6 is k to the 6. And there you go. All right, good luck with this one. A lot of mental gymnastics again. All right, bye now.